How would you like to hang out with me while I do some chores? In this episode, you'll be with me as I spend some time grooming Ovation and finishing up feeding one evening. I'll muse about having an intention for mundane moments, noticing differently, health benefits of living on your horse, and mostly you'll just be hanging out with me as I hang out with my horses. Hopefully you'll find this at least a little bit relaxing. So here we go, episode 129, Grooming and Musing. Hi, I'm Karen Rolfe, and welcome to Horse Training in Harmony. This podcast is about you making progress with your horse in a way that you both can love. It's about learning how to move and be in harmony because yes, you really can develop a horse to be both athletic and happy. When we show up as our best selves for our horses, our horses will show up for us. So let's get started. Hey everyone. So I'm out here in the barn and I just fed in the evening and I was going to uh, just groom Ovation because he's standing right here. Hi, honey. Hi, can we kiss? <laughs> oh, thank you. And I just thought that might be kind of fun to have you join me as I uh, have a little grooming session with this clown. And uh, as you might expect, a grooming is not just about grooming. So let's let him in. He's in the front paddock of the barn and I just opened the door and a uh, hot shot is just outside the barn. I have a stall guard aisle up or a barn aisle guard up. Would you like to come in too, buddy? We can do that. <laughs> He's sort of leaning on it. And now, oh, hi. Hi, Ovation. Ovation has just walked over with a cone in his mouth. Would you like to play fetch? Okay, here. Are you, now, now you're getting that toy. All right, thank you. That's very good. Yeah, that's very good. All right. So now he's... <laughs> he's I have some uh, ropes and jugs and things hanging up near uh, the wash stall. Uh, and that's what he likes to play with. Now he's picking up and dropping the little water tub. Uh, he is the class clown. So, you know, this is one of those moments where it's like, okay, what's the goal here? Yeah, I thought I might give him a little groomies, but I'm not about to ride him. He's done. Uh, I'm just doing the evening feeding. So the purpose of this session is to just hang out with Ovation and uh, apparently Hot Chat too. And just kind of spend some time with him and not be asking him to do stuff. Oh, he's picking up the water tub again. <laughs> and a lot of times that's what grooming is really about, right? So it's easy to just get in a habit of like, all right, I'm going to groom my horse. So on goes the halter, on to the cross ties. Let's contain the chaos and, uh, you know, get this job done. So I talk a lot about knowing, you know, why you do the exercise you do. And I think that's a good practice for anything. It's like, what's the intention behind whatever you do? And so when I get on my horses, that's the, I get on them and we start to go for a little walk around. And I say actually out loud to myself, like, okay, my intention for this session is fill in the blank. And I try to keep it to like a word or two or a sentence. So my intention for this moment is to hang out with Ovation. Use grooming as the excuse to kind of observe his whole body. And hopefully find some things that he enjoys. All right, so I'm not doing the grooming to him. I'm hoping I can find some itchy spots and... You know, when you're going through your day and <laughs> that's him uh, picking up the almost empty water tub, I think. Are you trying to tell me something, bud? Would you like that filled up again? There's just a tiny little bit of water in there. All right. I'll do it. So apparently, Ovation wants me to fill up the water tub, which is fine. There 
so wet. Please leave the hose in there. No, 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 no. Please, please leave that in there. Oh, please. All right, now he's got the hose in his mouth. This will quiet down in a second when it starts to fill up. He likes to help. Hi, buddy. If you just wait a minute, if you just wait a minute, it will be full of water. <laughs> I know you're being so patient. Oh my god, you smell so good. Oh, what is it about horse muzzles? Or horse necks, or actually, I guess just about any part of their body. This smells so good. Okay, now it's full enough for him to have a little bit. Good job, He's not very delicate about many things. He sort of bombs through life. But he's very delicate about drinking. He's very careful as he puts his muzzle into the water and he takes little sips and then he picks his head up and hangs out for a second and before going in for another round. Hi. Are you checking, checking the surroundings? All right, there. You're welcome. Now where was I? I was I was currying. Alright, so I'm just gonna get this rubber curry. And one that they tend to like. And I'm just gonna see if I can find where he likes it. Well, now he's walked over to <laughs> he's walked over to the pieces of Velcro on my tack room door where you put the buttons where he can ask for either cookies or scratches but i'm not going to do that right now so he realized that and walked away now he's got the cone in his mouth again <laughs> hi is that for me thank you good boy good good, good. he's not gonna let it go hi good man good man all right would you like to get that again all right, so we can groom while he's uh, playing fetch with the cone. So what's my intention? My intention is to be with Ovation in a way that hopefully he enjoys. And if we can uh, inspect his body while, while we're doing that. Oh, hi, I've got a cone in my face again. Hello. That's great. And if he ends up getting clean, I guess that's bonus points. Yeah, you know, sometimes if I kid myself that like my assistant Becky's got the best job because the grooming and then just this non-demanding time with horses. Like I can remember back when I was a kid and just hours just brushing my horse and going over his body and you know, sometimes because of efficiency. You know, it's really nice to have somebody to do the big grooming and help me tack and untack just to, you know, make sure I have enough time to do the training sessions. But I really like to go out in the evenings and on the weekend when it's, when I do all the barn chores and just take a little extra time instead of scrolling through YouTube and Facebook or doing office stuff. What a nice way to just remember why I got into horses in the first place. It's a beautiful, oh, it's kind of a blustery evening. I hope this wind isn't too loud. Hi. Oh, he loves his ears being done. Ears? Nice. I like to tell them when I'm about to stick my hand in their ears, but I make like a little fist and uh, hold it just by their ear and they go ear and then they can either lean into it or not but he loves a good ear scratch so there you go buddy <laughs> flinging the cone around 
in his mouth. Looks like super fun. Now we're going to go for a walk with the cone in the mouth. <laughs> oh, a towel blued onto the ground, and that's just way too hard to resist. Oh, I was watching a um, watching an interview with Jim Carrey, the actor comedian, and. Uh, He's been on a kind of interesting life journey and uh, these days is doing a lot of artwork and become quite philosophical about life. But he said something the other day on a little video clip that just really resonated with me. It was one of those like, oh, <laughs> you know, like, yes, that put into words something I have been kind of entertaining in my brain. But... He said, um, he said he used to think of himself as a guy trying to figure out the universe. And he said, these days, or at least at the time of the making of that video, he thinks of himself as the universe trying to figure out the guy. And there's something about that that just really clicked in my mind. And, and it's, it's kind of how I feel in these kind of moments where I'm just, you know, doing something not to get it done, but just to be here grooming my horse. And um, I'll take a little detour and come back to that because it's connected with um, I don't know if any of you guys experience this. So sometimes I'll look, I'll look at my hand. <laughs> I know it's going to sound really weird, you guys. My husband doesn't understand this. <laughs> but I'll like look at my hand or my leg or some part of me. And then all of a sudden it l feels like I'm looking at someone else's hand or someone else's leg. Does anybody else connect with this? <laughs> it's very subtle, but it's like, oh. <laughs> oh, am I going to get a kiss ovation? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I said, it's like, look at, there's a hand there. And it doesn't feel like, oh yeah, that's me. It feels like, oh, look at that. That's a hand. Like, check that out. When's the last time I really like just looked at my hand as if it wasn't something I knew everything about, you know, to know something as well as the back of your hand. Well, the, the reality is I don't often stare at the back of my hand. <laughs> so in those moments where I get that like shift, I'm like, oh look, there's a hand. And then I find myself looking at it differently. And that's what that statement by Jim Carrey really connected with me. It's like all of a sudden I'm looking at life like, oh, like I'm something else. I'm not me, I'm not Karen who was born in Kansas and grew up on Long Island and lives in Florida right here, right now. I'm something else that's going, Oh, look at this cool moment that's happening, right? Look at, oh my gosh, I'm like, I got a horse in front of me. <laughs> so, and it's a little bit like, um, you guys ever watch like the GoPro footage? So you'll come across, you know, GoPro of someone doing a cross country course on a horse or skiing or mountain biking or, you know, something that maybe you don't do, or maybe it's something that you do. Like there's GoPro footage of people riding dressage or, you know, other things. And even if you do it or don't do it, it's interesting, right? It's interesting because it's like you get to ride along and see this moment from somebody else's perspective. So you either get to do something that you never get to do, or you get to do something and still it's like, wow, what's going to happen? Like, what's it like to be that person doing that thing? right? You get to go along for the ride. And so that's the feeling that I connected with Jim Carrey's statement is that I am the universe trying to figure out the guy, right? So if you think about it, <laughs> and yeah, this is the things I think about. Welcome to my brain. Every moment is kind of like a GoPro moment, right? There's, you've never been in this moment before. Every moment, right? Time's like a river. It just keeps coming. It's never the same exact moment. So why isn't our own experience as interesting as that GoPro video on YouTube? And so if you can on purpose, 
off. You can do whatever you want. But what I try to do <laughs> is, is on purpose, can I shift into that perspective where I'm not like, yeah, whatever, I'm grooming a horse, done it a million times. And can I shift into this feeling of, look at this. There's some body, some human body that's here with a horse and they're doing this thing. And I wonder what's going to happen next. Or I wonder what it's like. Or look at that. That feeling that you get when you're watching a skier. Hi, sweetie. Oh my God, you smell so good. When you're watching a skier go down a, a hill. Oh, he loves his eyes being brushed with a soft brush really slowly over the top of his eyes. He loves that. I love finding the delicate moments of ovation, the del delicate things about ovation because he really is a class clown. He's a very physical horse. All oh, he's doing stuff with his mouth and bombing through something. But he has these little delicate things like the ears and the way he drinks and the very soft, slow brushes over his eyes, like going from his forehead, like the midline between his ears or bet yeah, between his eyes and then going out and down over his eyes. Oh my God, he loves that. <laughs> it's like the one moment that ovation goes quiet. Oh. So anyway, I hope, <laughs> I hope you're not sitting there going, whoa, Karen, so weirdo. I mean, yeah, I am. So <laughs> it's, it's good you find out now. Hi, right, buddy, where'd your boyfriend go? Let's get the other brush and do a little bit of his mane. He's got a crazy thick, thick mane. And um, it really likes to stand straight up. So if it's anything shorter than like 10 inches long, it, it like sticks straight up. And I have to say, I really like it that way. It suits his personality. So I like to keep his mane <laughs> short enough that it, he goes straight up. Oh, every time I'm brushing like the mane and tail, it just goes right back to like when I was a kid. Gosh, how many times have I brushed a horse's tail? But I can remember like when I first got my first horse, like how amazingly like, happy and complete I felt brushing the tail of this horse, which, you know, the belonged, belongs to me just always sounds a little bit weird, but of this horse who's I'm building this relationship with and like, how freaking cool is this? I wonder if I posted a GoPro video of me brushing a horse's tail, how many views it would get. I guess you guys are getting a little uh, accidental ASMR here too. <laughs> You're welcome. All right, so let's see, I've done the currying. I found his soft places. Got some itches in there too. Oh, that's hot shot starting in the background. Done the mane, done the tail. Hey buddy. Now I like to just, it's so funny. I do like the legs all together. Cause once I squat down these days, once I squat down, it's like, I'm going to stay down for a little bit. <laughs> I don't, it's just funny. I used to go like down from the shoulders down. Now I do the whole body and then, oh good boy. Then I'll reach down and do, I'll go into leg mode. <laughs> And his legs, he's got such a thick winter coat this year, so he's clipped like a quarter clip. But I don't clip his legs. It just keeps it protected a little bit more. So he looks like a super athlete muscle man on the top, and he looks kind of like a, a yak <laughs> on the bottom. But I love just like running my hands down his legs and just feeling... You know, just feeling them. It's so good to inspect them, especially when they have their winter coats, because stuff can <laughs> show up under there. And if you don't really like run your fingers through their hair, you can miss it. 
I mean, Facebook, I'm sure I know that, but I can, I can remember uh, my first, it was my second horse, my thoroughbred. He was very accident and injury prone. And anytime he had an injury, I used to just go down to the barn and all the time that I had to ride, if I couldn't ride, I would just sit there and I'd just run my hands over the leg that was injured. And I guess, you know, it's probably Reiki, <laughs> some key, very uh, accidental version of Reiki or just that touch is so, so powerful. And I remember I actually was licensed for massage therapy at one part of my life back in New York. And I remember reading about this study and I hope I remember it right. Some of you might know it or remember it and be like, Karen, that's, that was wrong. But anyway, I'll give you the gist of it. Um, it was a lab that was measuring um, heart disease. And so they were using rats and they were feeding the rats these really unhealthy diets and then would measure the impact on their, you know, their circulatory system and stuff like that. And there were a certain number of, actually it was rabbits. It was a rabbit. So there were a certain number of rabbits in the study. And the results, for the most part, now I'm going to like, walk like a crab over to the hind leg. <laughs> uh, um, the results were sort of as expected. Oh, he's gotten really quiet right now. He's kind of in like this little meditation. So yay, ovation. It's easier to do legs when he's not running around doing the stuff. Anyway, the results from this lab, you know, was, were always as expected. You know, the, the rabbits that were fed the worst diet um, had more signs of arterial sclerosis and heart disease or whatever the heck they were measuring. But there are these outliers, the rabbits who should have had all these, you know, ill effects to their health, but they didn't. So they would do the experiment again. They're thinking, okay, something must have gone wrong or they got the wrong diet or whatever. So they got new rabbits in. And they did the experiment again, and same thing. The results would be kind of as expected, but there would be these outliers. And, it, and what was interesting to them was it was like the same number of outlier rabbits, even though it was a whole new population of rabbits. So what they figured out eventually, oh, there's a different pump I hadn't noticed before. What they realized, was that the particular rabbits that were fed the bad diet but did not have the bad effects, didn't fit you know, the, the normal expectation of the data, um, happened to be ones that had more handling. So apparently in this lab, they had a certain number of space for I'm kind of squished in here. Um, a certain number of space for cages, and not all of the rabbit cages fit in this one area. So some of the rabbit cages were like above the bench in the lab. And it turns out that some of the grad students there, when they were working on stuff or reading, they would just take the rabbits out of the cage and hold them and pet them. <laughs> and so what they figured out was the rabbits that stayed healthier were the particular rabbits that got taken out of their cages and held and stroked. And so probably they were slightly happier rabbits than the other rabbits. So the power of touch. So when I'm, I'm here kind of squatting down, <laughs> probably in not a very pony club safe spot. He's kind of, kind of <laughs> between the wall and him, but he's kind of, to sleep so all right let me hold up here so when i'm just having this like running down his legs like am i massaging him no am i grooming him no am i investigating him yeah but i'm really just getting my hands on him i'm kind of starting at the top and one hand's in the front of the leg and one hand's in the back of the leg and with my hands and his legs, that actually kind of ends up going just about all the way around. 
I'm just sliding my hands down and I'm just trying to conform to his leg as I go down. And of course, as I do that, he's getting a massage. As I do that, I'm noticing stuff. But I'm just kind of doing it just to feel him and just to touch him. And letting all the memories of the first time I did this I'm letting those kind of appear. I'm enjoying them. I'm looking at my hands and my horse's leg as if I'm watching a GoPro. I'm like, this is cool. I wonder what she's going to do next. <laughs> all right, so I'm going all the way around. And he's looking out. The wind's really blowing, so he's looking out into the kind of edge of the property with all the trees. And he's like really quiet and still, but the ears are up and the eyes are open. So it's kind of in a, um, you know, those moments where you're like super calm and super aware at the same time. He kind of looks like that. And I talk as he just flip back a little bit. So on the one hand, he looks like he could move any second. And on the other hand, he feels like he's just here. That's a pretty cool spot to be in. Hi, buddy. Oh, I did a good job on your feet when I trimmed them this week. All right. Oh, so now I get up slowly, and this is the part where I'm going to lean on him for a second because after I've been squatting for a while, sometimes I get lightheaded. Ooh, Ooh the wind's really picking up. And now I'm going to move into... <laughs> Well, Ovation says, I'm going to move into picking up this towel and flinging it around because that's super fun. Thank you. That's helpful. You know, if that towel needed to be two feet over there. Um, oh, you're going to, where are you going to bring it? He's bringing it. Okay. He picked a towel that was drying in the barn. He's carried it over to um, a different wall. <laughs> so are you trying to get that on the hook? <laughs> Well, I'll put it on the hook for you. You didn't, you weren't super accurate with that, but. All right. I might just kind of play a little, see if I can find some, some scratchy spots. What do you think, lad? Oh, that's going to go see Hotshot. So he's wandering over now. We're going to go see Hotshot. Hi, bud. <laughs> So he's going, he's, <laughs> you too. So he's come over to Hotshot, who is his absolutely best friend, walked up and then just started biting him, <laughs> like grabbing his, like pinching his skin on his like neck and shoulder. And uh, Hotshot then uh, obliged by doing the same to him. So I guess that's their little secret handshake or something. But I mean, these horses just love each other so much they like eat off the same blade of grass when they're grazing and it's just so interesting to see what you know what's okay in their friendship and i guess coming up and uh, pinching each other's skin is okay all right now ovation's playing he's playing with the doorknob to the tack room what are you trying to get in there do you know i have cookies here you didn't even know that here you go you can have one because you weren't asking that's why yeah surprise Non-contingent gift. <laughs> Just for being you. Oh my god, he smells so good. How can something so dirty sm <laughs> smell so good? Oh, you know that like sweet, sweet, musky smell. I have to say, when I come home from not seeing my horses for a while is the first thing I do is they get, oh, are you going to pick your leg up? They get a big arms around them and a big old sniff. Oh my God, it smells so good. He just offered a little uh, jean bit. That was very nice of you. You didn't have to do that. But it's okay. Yeah, he has nice little spots on his belly. <laughs> That's a good one. Want me to pull your tail? I know you like that. Stretch. And I'm about done. 
So, I don't know if this was weird, just coming with me out here. Hi, Hotshot. I hope it's not too windy. Hey, oh, Hotshot has now um, put his head on my shoulder. You hear the wind chimes, it's really starting to blister out there. So Hotshot has got his head on my shoulder where I can, ooh, I can smell him really easily. Thank you, sweetie. And now he's leaning on my shoulder. <laughs> and Ovation is now biting the doorknob of the tack room. Luckily, it's a knob. If the tack room door had one of those like, lever handles, he'd be in it. Hi, Sydney. Sydney's in the in the golf cart already, of course. Sergeant Sydney reporting for duty. And actually, I will let Hi Bud let Ovation out. Hi. <laughs> I know, I left you in there. Hi, Annie. Give me a second. The snap is sticky. All right, hang on, that snap is too sticky. Here you go, bud. I'll load up with hay and then we'll get you back up to your pasture. Okay. All right, so I'm just unloading the hay steamer. Put that in the golf cart and then that's for the girls. I guess you guys are going to snack on the girls' hay for a so here's evidence, I think, of course, is using logic. There's hay on the ground that's loose hay. And in the golf cart, I'm putting hay that's in slow feeder hay nuts, so it's much harder to eat out of than if they just ate the hay off the ground. But they know, I think, they know that the golf cart is going to be going away. So they get the most hay by eating what's on the golf cart first and then eating what's left on the ground. And I think that's pretty darn smart. And I think that shows that they can think ahead. Or at least that they've noticed the pattern and weighed the value. Hi. <laughs> okay, there you go. All right, guys, come on. Here we go. So I just take off. Come on, bud. <laughs> you guys. Come on. Ovation. Come on, buddies. There you go. So they're turned out in the main area right now. And I'm trying to get them back in their pasture for the night. The main area is bigger and a lot more interesting than their pasture. I mean, it's a 10-acre pasture, so it's still pretty good. But I'm super happy they have decided to uh, stroll this direction. It's kind of in my, you know, how much can I do without having to put a halter on them? And see, so, yeah, I, might, I might have to wait a second for them to catch up, but they're heading here. If they're going to do it anyway, then I don't have to put a halter on them, and they feel like they had a little participation in the moment. No, no, no. Oh, come on. He's aiming for the golf cart. I gotta be like air traffic controller here. Buddy, I see you. I know you're so smart. I just told everybody how smart it is to eat off the golf cart first. And now it's time to go in your pasture. Come on, you see the big piles out there? I'm telling you, it's awesome. Good job. With these two, if you get one, you get both. Good job, hot shot. He's like, but the golf cart. But your friend's in there. Go on. You're awesome. Okay, guys. Bye-bye. Oh. Everybody tucked away. Safe and sound. Gate closed. Electric. Top wire reattached. Hi. I'll see you. <laughs> All right. Now to do is put this hay on the girls' track. Yeah, so you don't have to jump. Oh, I'll grab this clump of Spanish moss because the girls really love the Spanish moss. That will be a nice 
treat for them. And uh, yeah, Spanish moss. I, I googled whether Spanish moss was <laughs> healthy or not healthy for horses or if it was high in sugar. And it turns out Spanish moss actually has an ingredient in there that um, it's like a natural thing to help regulate sugar. Like um, if you wanted to like go natural to deal with your diabetes or whatever, that there's a, an ingredient in Spanish moss that apparently can be helpful for that. So my girls are on the dirt track. And so I like to let them eat the Spanish moss. I think that's a nice treat and I don't have to feel too guilty about it because apparently it's okay with them. All right, so I've just crossed in front of my house. Sydney keeps jumping on and then immediately back off with all cardigan because that's what Sydney does. She lives in the moment. <laughs> and now I'm going into the dirt track and the dirt track goes around the field that has my the dressage arena or whatever the arena come on Remy the arena that has the mirrors come on Remy I don't know why I hold the gate for Remy he can walk right underneath it but somehow I end up holding the gate for him is by hanging the hay nets in different places and different arrangements that actually changes the social dynamic too right so there's a little bit of competition for the hay nets. Now they have enough, right? So they have enough to last them all night and hopefully then some. But just by, like I could put, there's three horses out here, so I could put all three hay nets fairly close to each other and then they go to an area and they each have a hay net, right? So there's nothing to fight over or compete over. But sometimes I'll just put one hay net in an area and then you know, I'll spread them out. So they actually have to go off by themselves or maybe if they want to go off by themselves. I can imagine that if I always hung the hay nets in the exact same configuration, they just start to, you know, like little zombies, just like, okay, this is the hay net I go to because I negotiated it a year ago and that's just what we do. You know, and maybe every now and then they test it, but, but this way, it just gives them a little bit of something, a little something to do. <laughs> and that is that. We're done. Thanks, guys. Thanks for keeping me company. I feel like Mr. Rogers or something. Thanks for keeping me company. Thanks for being my neighbor. <laughs> All right. Bye.